morning, it's good to gather together in our Father's house. I want to invite you to join me, please, in our life verse for this month. It comes from the prophet Isaiah. This is chapter 43 and verse 19. Let's read these words together. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Whether you're worshiping with us in person or virtually, we are just glad that you are here this morning. I pray that this time for all of us together will be a time that is fruitful and a time that is a blessing to each one of us. It's going to be a pretty quiet week here at Stockton, so I just have a couple of reminders for you. Our giving tree has many new leaves on it, filled with different uh, non-perishable food items that we've been collecting. Right now, underneath the tree is packed, and I want to thank all of you for your generosity. We're going to continue to collect these items, uh, and we're serving uh, a couple of the area food banks that obviously, after the holidays, are very, very low, so we do appreciate all that you do to help our friends and our neighbors throughout the county. Also want to uh, remind you, I think most of you have already picked them up, but if you haven't, if you haven't yet, the 2022 giving statements are on the back table in the hallway, so please make sure you grab that before you leave today. And also, Wednesday night activities will continue this week. Uh, please use the sign-up sheet in the hallway if you're coming for dinner, which starts at 6. And then, of course, Bible study will be both in person and virtual starting at 6.45. We're continuing to look at a series entitled Jesus I Never Knew. And I'm not too sure where this week's is going either, but it's going to be interesting, so I hope you can join us. Uh, final uh, announcement I've got for this morning is I, I want us uh, to all say congratulations to Victor, who has just accepted a position as an adjunct professor at Eastern Mennonite University. Uh, Victor will be instructing the students on improvisation. Is that correct? Okay. All right. It's going to be. It's a. Uh, it's a virtual class, so he's not going anywhere. Because <laughs> he knows better than that. But uh, so he will now be. Adjunct professoring at William and Mary and at Eastern Mennonite, in addition to absolutely everything else that he does. So, Victor, we're very proud of you, and I know that you're going to help frame and shape some young minds. We won't talk about young minds, too, but <laughs> the next generation of musicians. So, thank you. All right, let's go ahead and start our time of worship with a word of prayer. God, of mercy and grace, we have come together this day to worship you and to praise your holy name. We are grateful and thankful to be able to come into your presence to hear your word proclaimed. And we ask, O oh Father, that you will receive our prayers and our praises as we lift them to you. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. You can stand your able to sing the heart of worship. See the lyrics are over here.
We have, as you can see in your highlights, we have several folks that I am asking you to continue to lift in prayer, several in our church family who have special challenges and, and special days ahead. And I would ask you to keep them in your prayers. But we also this morning have blessings, several blessings to be grateful for and to be thankful for. Obviously, Victor's new position is one of them. Um, I also want to let you know that Tanya arrived home safely late yesterday afternoon. She is back at the hospital. She's back home. She is doing very well. Uh, she and I were texting back and forth through the afternoon yesterday as she was waiting for her ride, and she was on her way back home, uh, and she was joking like Tanya always does. So it was just such a, a joy for me to, to read those texts and also to let you know that God's healing hand is definitely upon that young lady, and she is doing well, so we're grateful for that. Please continue to pray for Wallace. Um, he's got just a little over another week at rehab, and then he should, he too should be uh, ready to go back home. Um, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Please continue to pray for Patty. Uh, the surgery that she had a couple weeks ago on her foot apparently did not work, as well as the doctor would have liked. So it looks like she's going to be looking at it again, but hopefully this time it will be better, and it will heal better, and just know that we're we're praying for you always, always. There's a lot going on in our world. Um, it, it seems that you, you can't turn on the news. Well, I, I try, I'll be honest with you, I try not to turn on the news anymore. It, 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 it just gets so overwhelming. Um, but let's not worry about that. Let's pray about it. But let's not worry about it. Worrying doesn't do us any good. But asking for God's help is something that we can all do, and we can do that every day. So now as we take some time for you to go to the Lord, to lift to Him those concerns and those joys that are on your heart and in your life, I also invite you to pray for the folks in our church family, pray for our nation and our world, pray for our church as we go into a period of transition as well. Above all, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Because we need you. We need you. Pastor Bill. So we pray for you. <clears throat> pray for one another. I'm sorry. I have a special prayer yes, sure. request. You have to speak up on this. I have a special prayer request. We have one of our friends, really dear friend of ours that like five, six years ago, he was in an accident, a fire accident on his boat. He got through that. He's now in the hospital now. He had um, spine surgery. And after his spine surgery, they found out he also had some mini strokes that he was not aware of. They also just found out <clears throat> he's in stage four lung cancer. Um, basically, the doctor said there's nothing else they can do. And I'm asking for special prayer because he's coming home on Tuesday. Basically, he called my husband and told my husband that he, that he wants to have everybody come over and start saying goodbye. So I just want y'all to pray for him. His name is Stuart uh, Tally. He's a really good friend of ours. So I'm just praying that, that God would just to do his will to give him comfort and Whatever he needs to say at the end of his time. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father knows all of our needs. And he will provide for each one of those who are sick. Also for each one of those who are in need. We all need our Heavenly Father. So let's take a moment and go to him right now. And unite with prayer.
Gracious God, as we humbly come before you this morning in prayer, we approach your throne of glory with grateful hearts, giving thanks to be called your children and heirs of Christ to your kingdom. We know that we are numbered among the body of believers. We pray that we will never lose sight of all of the blessings that you shower upon us and that we will never take for granted a single one. Father God, this morning we ask that you will hear our united prayer as well as those individual prayers of our hearts as we join together this morning. Father, we truly do give you thanks for healing that you have already begun and for healing that you will continue. We know that there are diseases, illnesses, sicknesses in our world that we can't control. But we know that you have each one of your children wrapped in your loving arms. Then no matter what season we're in, Lord, you know, and you are willing and able and desiring to guide and direct us. You've given us confidence born of faith, especially as we approach uncertain times, Father God. Lord, we ask you to teach us to be more like Jesus, who, when facing difficulty, cried out to you for guidance. Lord, we ask that you will instruct us as we move forward into the known and the unknown and fill us with confident assurance born out of that faith that we have in you. Father, do as you did to the generations before us and show us your glory as you reveal your will for our lives, both individually and as this part of the body that we call Stockton Memorial Baptist Church. Father, help us to hear afresh the testimony of the saints who have gone before us, reminding us that you do not forsake those who put their trust in you. And as we come before you today, we're in position. Once again, we thank you for healings that you have already begun in our lives and in the lives of our church family and our friends. You are the one who created each one of us. You know us better than we know ourselves. And you have promised to supply all of our needs. Father, we pray for those whose names are on our prayer list. And we ask you to hear the silent prayers of each one of your people. Remind us each and every day that there is no power, no force on earth that can steal us from you. Why, Father, we ask that if it is your will that you will restore the broken, bring comfort to the confused, and reveal yourself to those who doubt. Give each one of us courage to be obedient to your will, to stand strong for what is just and right. And remind us, Lord, that even when we feel we are standing alone, we are never really alone as long as we were, as long as we are in you. And now we pray, come, Holy Spirit. Come and fill this place and help us to feel your strong and loving embrace. All these things and more we pray as we follow Jesus' example by joining our hearts and our voices together. Praying as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
power be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you don't stand at your table and say number 484, higher ground.
Today's scripture comes from the book of James, chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You don't know even what, you will, what will happen to you tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and the message we're about to receive. We ask you to bless us and help us to take it all to heart. In Christ's name, amen.
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In fact, as you read through this first chapter and most of the book of James, it reads an awful lot like Christ's words in the Beatitudes as they are found in the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. Words that many of us unpacked this past week in our Wednesday night Bible study. Most of these writings, many of these writings sound contrary in today's upside down world, but as we learn, they are right side up in God's kingdom. It's not the words that are contrary, it's not the words that are upside down, it's the world. In the second chapter of his letter, James continues to inspire his readers by reminding them of who they are in God's eyes. Verse 5 of chapter 2 reads like this. Has God not chosen people who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? In that same chapter, James also gives us important instructions on how our actions are always, always to match our words. It's not enough to share, it's not enough to speak the word, we have to be able to live the word. Don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. In chapter 3, James warns us to keep a close watch over all that we say or do. Chapter 3 hones in, if you will, on the tongue, on the tongue. And how the tongue can be dangerous if we don't pay attention and if we don't rein in our tongues. Which brings us to our focus chapter for today, in chapter 4. James calls upon all faithful believers to submit themselves fully to God. There's one of those words that we don't like in our world. We don't like the word submit. It means to many, give up. Well, I can't do it, so I'll just give up. I'll just submit. But that's not what God's saying. That's not what James was writing about. James cautions God's people to control their own wants and desires and instead submit them to their Heavenly Father. Because, James says, when we focus on our own wants and our own desires, this is what leads to quarrels and leads to fighting. Not just in the world, but even amongst believers. At the end of verse 2 in chapter 4, and the beginning of verse 3, James wrote these words. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you do ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I want, I want, I want. For me, for me, for me. Isn't that our world today? The answer to all of this, according to James, is simply this. Submit yourself, surrender yourself, if you will, to God. And then James writes, humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. And as we all know, the Lord is capable of lifting each one of us higher than we ever thought we could do on our own. If we will simply submit to Him. This comes to a climax, if you will, in the verses that Jimmy read for us this morning. Jimmy, thank you for the reading and for your prayers. In these three verses, James warns us against two mistakes. Two mistakes that people were making then and that people are still making in our world today. And then he gives us, not just, doesn't just point out our errors, but he points out the answers or the answer. Wonderful solution that he gives to us. 
We have to remember, folks, that when we declare ourselves to be followers of Jesus Christ, we are putting, as Marlon would say, a huge target on our backs. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. That declaration means the world expects you to do what? To do everything perfect. Perfect. Or perfectly, I guess I'm supposed to say, when he's proper. But you know what I'm talking about. He goes to church, so we better, let's keep an eye on him. It's not, he goes to church, so let's do like he does. It's, let's see if we can tear him down. It happens to all of us. We encounter it throughout our lives. Once we have professed our faith in Christ. As believers, we are not immune from making these two mistakes that James wrote about. But we have to be mindful of them so that we don't make the mistakes. In verse 3, James calls us to be aware of making foolish plans. Foolish plans. Now, I want to tell you something. Right off for me, this is a tough one. When James says, don't make plans, that's... <laughs> I'm a planner. Always had been. I mean, from, from the youngest I can remember, I used to write out schedules of what I was going to do in my day. And I, and I used to put time limits by it. I know, preaching is not one of the things that got a time limit. But anyway. <laughs> and I would put time limits by it so that, so that I knew exactly what I should be doing every minute of every day. That, that was, I don't know where that came from. I, it doesn't matter. When we go on vacation, I am called, what? The tour guide. I am the tour guide. For me, I love doing that. I, I will spend hours and days and weeks planning out a vacation that lasts seven days. I mean, seriously, I'll take one to make sure that all of the reservations have been confirmed, that all of the travel plans are scheduled, that all the directions that we need are covered. I make sure that we pack everything that we're going to need. I, I'm like the proverbial Boy Scout when it comes to planning a trip. I figure the best thing to do is to be prepared. I used to do that. I don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore because I've learned that when I plan, <laughs> I'm leaving no room for God's plan. James wasn't saying don't plan. What he was warning the people against was leaving God out of their plans. Look what it says in, this, in, in the writing. We will go. We will stay here for a certain amount of time. We will do this. We will, we will, we will with no thought about God's will. There's nothing wrong with planning for upcoming events. In fact, I believe that if you don't do at least some planning, you're being foolhardy. And even more so when you don't include God, God's plan, or God in your plans, excuse me. Two reminders of this. One of them is an absolute favorite of mine. It comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Most of you know this one by heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Those words came from Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. And so important was it to Solomon that he followed it up just a few chapters later in Proverbs 16 and verse 3 when he wrote, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. I'm getting off subject here, believe it or not. I know. How many of you like or appreciate when someone helps you on a project. But you don't have to do it all on your own. 
but you've got someone else to help you. There's usually two reasons we like that. And the negative reason, if you will, is because if it doesn't go the way we planned, what can we do? It was her fault. It was his fault. It was their fault. See? But when we include God in our plans, we're the one that's at the end of that finger. God's going, I have a plan for you. And if it doesn't work out, it's not God's fault. It's the one that's at the end of the finger. It's their fault. In our, I believe that in our culture, there are two kinds of atheists. True atheists, or what I call true atheists, which almost sounds like an oxymoron, but true atheists believe, believe that there is no God. That there is no supreme being, that things just happen. And what we as guys, I want a bunch of a lot of things I'm saying that, and you're all going, oh, Jesus. No, we disagree with that. As Christians, we disagree with that. But as Christians, we're also taught that we're, it's okay to disagree, but what? But we shouldn't be disagreeable. It's okay to say, I don't agree with you, and here's why. But we don't, as I've told you before, beat them over the head with the Bible. Okay? Then there's the second kind of atheists. And these are the ones that we've got to be really careful of. These are the tricky ones. They believe it or not, they're what I call acting atheists. There are churches around the world that are filled this morning with acting atheists. These are people who say they believe in God, but they act like there is no God. They act like they are in charge. Call them acting atheists. They live their lives for themselves. The bottom line, my friends, is this. It's okay to make plans as long as we are seeking God's will throughout the process throughout the planning stage, if you will. Second mistake people make is second mistake people make is making foolish assumptions. Okay? What do we all know about what they say about assumptions? When you assume you, well, I'm not going to give you the rest because you probably know it, and if you don't, <coughs> we'll figure it out somewhere. But you all know what I'm talking about. We make foolish assumptions. As James wrote in verse 14, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow, and you're talking about what you're going to do next week, next month, and next year, but you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. We must always be aware of our own limitations. And not only that, we also must be careful to resist the temptation of procrastination. That's a mouthful. Resist the temptation of procrastination. Do I have any procrastinators in the group? You ever just ever say, you know, I, 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 I know I gotta cut the grass, but yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Uh, I, I know I need to get this done or that done around the house, but and there's ball game on, so I'll do it after the ball game. Okay? We all do. Some more than others. Some to a greater or lesser degree. I believe an important part of maturing is acknowledging that life is filled, filled with unexpected twists and turns. Amen? Amen. I got a plan. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to until you hit that wall or until the road takes a Strange, takes on a strange direction. It's a sign of mature faith when we come to the realization that none of us know the number of our days. None of us, of course, except our Heavenly Father. He knows exactly the number of our days. 
It may be okay to procrastinate about not cutting the grass. It may be okay to procrastinate about I'm not throwing the trash away, although I'm after a while. But one day it's going to be too late to make the most important decision we'll ever make in our lives. Accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. A wise man once wrote, Cemeteries are filled with people who plan to give their lives to Christ, but never got around to it. Folks, procrastination is a bad mistake. It's a foolish mistake. It's a foolish assumption to assume that we have all the time in the world. No, we don't. We have all the time that we are allowed. So, now that I've told you the two problems, the two areas that we need to improve on, let me give you James' solution. How do we avoid these two common mistakes? It's very simple. It's found in verse 15, where James wrote, instead you want to say, if it is the Lord's will, I and we will live and do this or do that. I don't think I've ever led a worship service in all of my years as a pastor, in all of my years as a Sunday school teacher. I don't think I've ever led a lesson where I didn't encourage the listeners to look to God for guidance in whatever circumstances they may find themselves. I don't think I've ever not said, seek God's will for your life. We just prayed it again this morning, didn't we? In the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. One of Jesus' last prayers when he was walking this earth was, Father, not my will, but thy will. Thy will. James wrote, what is your life? He said, you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. None of us knows the number of our days. One of my favorite hymns, and I wish I'd thought of this before I, before Victor and I agreed on the hymns for this morning, but one of my favorite hymns contains these lyrics. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then it goes on to say, and all that you ask, will be given unto you. Seek ye first the will of God, and all that we ask will be given unto us. So you may be wondering why would I choose this particular scripture, this particular passage for today's sermon. I have a good reason. I have a good reason. Well, I have two good reasons. Good reason was I thought it was a good, good passage. The better reason was God validated it for me. Each week when I'm working on sermons, throughout the entire process, I'm asking God to validate it for me. And this week as I was putting this message together, he reminded me that immediately following worship today, he informed Committee on the Future of Stockton Memorial Baptist Church will hold their first meeting as they begin to look at our next steps for our church. I'm telling you this because they covet your ideas and your input, and most of all, they're seeking your prayers. This is going to be a difficult task. But I know in my heart that every member of that committee has been praying about it since last Sunday when the committee was first formed. Now, I'm not going to be part of this committee, but I do plan on, in fact, I've already told the chairperson of this committee that I will make myself available to help them in whatever way I can through resources that I may have that they don't have. 
to people that I don't know that they don't know. But I'll do whatever I can to help them and be available for advice. And I want to start the advice giving right now. So as members of the committee and as the body of Stockton Memorial Baptist Church, let me give you this. I'm going to ask the committee to adopt this verse to help guide them. It comes from the prophet Jeremiah. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. Plans to give you hope, a future, and a hope. A future and a hope. My prayer is that the body of Stockton Memorial Baptist Church will write that passage on their hearts and carry it and keep this committee in your prayers throughout this process. Our closing hymn this morning expresses beautifully, beautifully, what I pray will be the, the sense and the atmosphere and the collection of this church in the days and weeks and months ahead. So Victor, if you would bring that to us. If you understand, you can sing number 476, Be Strong in the Lord, all first.
blessing is part of the armor that you wear. Carry his blessings to the world. Find strength where you feel there is no strength. Be strong in the Lord. Be of good courage, for he is your God. His will be done this day and forevermore.